Little Goody Two Shoes. The Beacon Second Reader by James Hiram Fassett. All the world must know that Two Shoes was not her real name. No, her father's name was Meanwell, and he was for many years a well to do farmer. While Marjorie, for that was her real name, was yet a little girl, her father became very poor. He was so poor that at last he and Marjorie's mother, and Marjorie and her little brother, were all turned out of doors. They did not have a roof to cover their heads. Marjorie's father felt so unhappy that at last he died, and only a few days later Marjorie's mother died too. Poor little Marjorie and her brother were left alone in the wide world. Their sorrow would have made you pity them, but it would have done your heart good to see how fond they were of each other. They always went about hand in hand, and when you saw one, you were sure to see the other. Look at them in the picture. They were both very ragged, and though Tommy had two shoes, Marjorie had but one. They had nothing, poor little things, to live upon but what kind people gave to them. Each night they lay on the hay in just such a barn as you see here. Mr. Smith was a very good man who lived in the town where little Marjorie and Tommy were born. Although he was a poor man, he took the children home to live with him. They shall not want for food nor for a bed to sleep in while I live, he said. Mr. Smith had a friend who was a very wealthy man. When he heard the story about Marjorie and Tommy, this man gave Mr. Smith some money to buy little Marjorie a new pair of shoes and Tommy a new suit of clothes. Can you see Tommy in the picture wearing his new clothes? The gentleman who had given the money for Marjorie's new shoes and Tommy's new clothes wished to take Tommy with him to London to make a sailor of him. When the time came for Tommy to go, both children began to cry. They kissed each other a hundred times. At last Tommy wiped away Marjorie's tears and said, Don't cry, little sister, for I will come home to you again and bring you beautiful clothes and much money. That night Marjorie went to bed, weeping for her dear little brother. It was the first time they had ever been parted. The next morning the shoemaker came in with Marjorie's new shoes. She put them on in great glee and ran out to Mrs. Smith, crying, Two shoes, two shoes, see goody two shoes. This she did to all the people she met so that soon she was known far and wide as Goody Two-Shoes. Dear little Marjorie saw how good and wise Mr. Smith was. She thought it was because he read so many books. Soon Marjorie wished above all things to learn to read. She would borrow books from the school children and sit down and read and read. Very soon she could read better than any of her playmates. Marjorie took such delight in her books that she wished everybody else could read too. So she formed this plan of teaching very little children how to read. First she made letters out of bits of wood with her knife. She worked and worked until there were ten sets of the small letters and six sets of the large letters. She then made the little tot spell words with her wooden letters. Take the word plum pudding, and who can think of a better one? The first little child picked up the letter P, the next L, the next U, the next M, and so on, until the whole word was spelled. If a child took up a wrong letter, he was to pay a fine or play no more. Each morning, with her basket full of wooden letters, Marjorie went around from house to house. The little children learned to read very fast. 
Can you see Marjorie with her basket of letters in this picture? The first house she came to was Farmer Wilson's. See, here it is. Marjorie stopped and ran up to the door. Tap, tap, tap. Who is there? Only little goody two-shoes, said Marjorie. Come to teach Billy. Is that you, little goody, said Mrs. Wilson. I'm glad to see you. Then out came the little boy. How do, do dee two-shoes, said he, not being able to speak plainly. Marjorie took little Billy by the hand and led him to a quiet spot under a tree. Then she threw the letters on the ground all mixed up together like this. Z-A-Y-W-B-L-M-P-J-F-X-C-O-Q-G-E-K-V-N-D-H-R-I-T-U-S Billy picked them up, calling each one by its right name, and put them all in just their right places. They now look like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Do you think you could have done as well as little Billy? The next place Marjorie came to was Farmer Simpson's, and here it is. Bow, wow, wow, said the dog at the door. Be still, sir, said Mrs. Simpson. Why do you bark at little two-shoes? Come, Alice, here is goody two-shoes ready to teach you. Then out came the little one. Well, Alice, said two-shoes, have you learned your lesson? Yes, indeed I have, said the little one, and taking the letters she formed them in this way. B A B E B I B O B U D A D E D I D O D U F A F E F I F O F U H A H E H I H O H U As she formed them, she gave their exact sounds. The next place Marjorie came to was Gaffer Cook's house. Here a number of poor children all came around her at once. These children had been to her school longer than the first little tots and could read words and lines. This is what Marjorie gave them to read. He that will thrive must rise by five. Truth can be blamed but cannot be shamed. A friend in your need is a friend indeed. A wise head makes a closed mouth. A lie stands upon one leg, but truth upon two. A good boy will make a good man. Honor your parents, and the world will honor you. Love your friends, and your friends will love you. Did you ever read lines like this in your school reader? At last Marjorie grew up and was given a real school to teach and a real schoolroom to teach in. She still used her little wooden letters and made the children fetch each one to spell the words. One day, as Marjorie was going home from school, she saw some bad boys who had caught a young crow. She went over to them and gave them a penny for the poor little bird and took him home. Marjorie called the crow Ralph, and under her care he grew into a very fine bird indeed. She even taught him to speak and to pick out a few of the letters. Some time after this, a poor lamb had lost his mother, and the farmer was about to kill him. Marjorie bought him and took him home with her to play with the children. This lamb she called Will and a pretty fellow he was. Do look at him. See him run and play with the children. The lamb was trained to carry home the books and the slates of the children who behaved well at school. 
See what a fine, strong fellow he is, and how he trudges along. Marjorie also had a present of a little dog. His name was Jumper. Look at him sitting up and begging in the picture. Did you ever see a dog with such bright eyes? He almost seems able to talk. Jumper, jumper, jumper. He was always playing and jumping about, and jumper was a good name for him. His place was just outside the door. See how he sits, the saucy fellow? One day jumper came whining into the schoolroom. He took hold of Marjorie's dress and pulled and pulled. What do you wish, dear jumper? asked Marjorie. But the dog only whined and pulled her toward the door. At last Marjorie went outdoors to see what was the matter. Then Jumper left her and ran back into the schoolroom. He took hold of the dress of one of the little girls and tugged and tugged. At length she too followed Jumper to the door. By this time all the children were on their feet and quickly followed the teacher out of the schoolroom. They were none too soon. The last little girl had hardly passed the door when, with a great crash, the roof fell in. All the children were safe, but what had become of Marjorie's dear books and letters and other things? Marjorie did not lose her school. A rich man who lived near ordered the schoolhouse to be rebuilt at his own expense. Another gentleman, Sir Charles Jones, having heard of Marjorie's good sense, offered her a home if she would teach his daughter. In fact, he finally fell in love with Marjorie, and they were married in the great church. And what do you think? On her wedding day, while the bells were ringing, Marjorie's brother Tommy came home. He had become the captain of a great ship. He had sailed to many lands, and he brought her all kinds of presents. Do you think she deserved to be very happy? She did not forget the children, you may be sure. A house in the village was fitted up as a school, and all the boys and girls were taught to read and write.